kind of hate being a tattooed person. My body was completely blank. I don't know if I would have gotten anything this big and bold. I wish that I may have not had gone as hectic as I did on my face. A recent study found that three in four people suffer from tattoo regret. And some of the most regrettable places to be tattooed were the butt, the face, and the upper arms. Today I wanted to focus on heavily tattooed people who regret tattooing a significant portion of their bodies. And there's actually a lot of people talking about this online, so we have a lot to go over today. If you're new here, my name is Sel, I am a tattoo apprentice, and I make tattoo related content right here every week. This conversation really began three years ago with YouTuber Morgan Joyce, who published her video titled Tattoo Regret is Real. Morgan is really honest and vulnerable in this video where she explains how she really dislikes being a heavily tattooed person and how now she's in her late 20s, she could have never imagined disliking something that was so central to her identity for so long. I kind of hate being a tattooed person and I never thought I'd be someone saying that because it's just been such a huge part of my life and a part of my interests and a part of my identity for so long that it's come as such a shock to me to have this realization as a person. Morgan talks about how it was a really difficult realization to come to because so many people were telling her that she would regret her tattoos. And it took her many years to come to the realization on her own that she does experience tattoo regret. By admitting that that you're not 100% happy, it almost like makes it feel like you're saying that those people were right. And it's hard to admit defeat and it's hard to be like, you know what, you were right. I think Morgan's video is really great and it's really brave to put yourself out there, especially as someone who creates tattoo content, to be like, hey, I wish I did this way differently. That's definitely a very difficult thing to admit, especially so publicly. And something that's really interesting about Morgan's video is she talks about how being so significantly tattooed, tattoo removal isn't really a feasible option for her. You can't undo this. Everything that I've done, you can't undo it. You can't, that's it. It's too much. You'd have to, I'd be getting laser tattoo removal probably for the rest of my life. Tattoo removal seems so accessible nowadays. I feel like some people even go into getting tattooed with the idea like this isn't actually permanent. I can just get it removed. But sometimes that isn't the case. Sometimes tattoos really are permanent. And in Morgan's case, it would be incredibly difficult to go through removing all of her tattoos, if not impossible. And there's another tattoo YouTuber named Quickend, who I've been a personal fan of for a really long time. Quickend also talks about how tattoo removal just isn't a good option for heavily tattooed people. I follow a tattoo removal Instagram. They had recently posted this thing all about large pieces and the success of removal for large pieces. And in their blog post, they talk about how they do not recommend getting large pieces removed. And I did find the article that Quickend was referencing. They used to go by Go Tattoo Removal, but now it's under the Removery brand. And in the article, they say that not every tattoo on every person will be ideal for full removal. The article goes on to say, quote, larger pieces, bigger than a standard sheet of paper that are heavily saturated, are also often difficult to completely remove. Alternatively, these clients are often recommended fading removal services to replace the old and get a cover-up of something new. And both Morgan and Quicken talk about how their lack of options makes this realization a lot more difficult to come to. It is one of those things where you feel helpless because your options are very, very, very limited. It just would be so nice to go back to the beginning and start all over again with the knowledge that I know now about tattoos and about me and like just all of it. And more recently, just two months ago, YouTuber Snitchery came out with a video titled When TikTok Makes You Regret Your Tattoos. And in this video, Snitchery talks about how she's exhausted by the amount of trends, like style trends that come in and out of fashion so quickly and wanting to jump on those and change her style and explore new things, but feeling really limited by her tattoos. 
I just am so aware that I look so different because of my tattoos and because of how just like loud they are and how aggressive. And I feel like if TikTok wasn't constantly throwing these cores at me, it wouldn't be something that I noticed as much. In a really interesting point that Snitchery brings up, is that when you're seeing these new style trends, you're often not seeing a lot of diversity when it comes to body type or racial diversity. It's typically thin white women who fit a very certain aesthetic that then mold into all of these different styles. Typically when an aesthetic becomes popular, say it's like the clean girl aesthetic, we're not going to see this like diversity in what I just mentioned, body types, ethnicities, etc, etc. We're going to see like the skinny white blonde girl. Any aesthetic is exclusionary in some capacity and I think social media definitely makes that worse. And social media really puts such an insane pressure on everyone to conform to whatever is popular at the moment. And it's almost like if you can't pull off cottagecore in one week and then 90s grunge the next, you're just not good enough. You're not cool enough. You're not trendy enough. And I'm sure that pressure is just heightened for people like Snitchery who are such popular content creators who constantly need to be creating and following these trends. And Snitchery mentions this idea that I feel like is kind of the core of this video. She feels stuck in an aesthetic that she chose when she was in her early 20s, that now that she's older, she doesn't necessarily feel like she resonates with. So this is not to say that you shouldn't get tattooed when you're young, but stylistically, these are very hard, badass tattoos, which reflected me perfectly when I was like 21. That's who I was when I was 18 to 22, hard and bold, and I knew exactly who I was, I thought. And now that I'm 26, I'm like, I actually know nothing, and I wish I had a little bit more real estate to do something a little bit different with my look, maybe a little bit more, more cohesive. And that's something that I've found a few heavily tattooed people on TikTok are also feeling. This first came to my attention when I saw this video by TikTok user Sarah Overshares. Imagine, if you will, that you put a shirt on once when you were in your 20s, and now you have to wear that for the rest of your life. And that is what it feels like to get heavily tattooed before you turn into a fully developed adult human. So I think if you ask almost anybody that's over 30, if they have a better idea of who they are in their 30s than they did in their 20s, they're gonna be like, oh my God, yes. I have all of these tattoos that don't necessarily reflect who I am at 36. They might've reflected a moment in time in my 20s, maybe a moment in time that I was like not doing so well mentally. Generally, I have like a lot more femme girly aesthetic than I did when I was younger. I was a lot more dark and spooky and moody and now like I have adult problems but I wanted to come on here and put myself out there and say I was told that I would regret my tattoos when I got older I am older and I do regret my tattoos and you might too and I wonder with this TikTok and with Snitchery's video if social media consuming our lives and feeling the need to identify with a certain aesthetic I wonder how much that contributes to the idea that your tattoos aren't a match to your aesthetic. Like why do we even need to be put into an aesthetic box? And why can't that include our tattoos? And that's not to say that Snitchery and Sarah Overshares aren't valid for how they feel, but I just question why that is. And another interesting commonality between these two videos is both creators talk about how their tattoos present a little bit more masculine than maybe they want to present. I got these tattoos in this style because this is me. I am like a little bit of a harder, more masculine person. Doesn't mean I can't wear dresses like this, but the majority of the time, I'm not. And that's honestly something that I hadn't even thought about until sitting down to record this video. And it's something that I've also kind of felt pressure about my tattoos. Sometimes I feel the need to almost dress extra feminine because of my tattoos. Because if I don't, then I'll be perceived as more masculine than I necessarily want to be. But also I question just even the validity of that statement. Like what makes tattoos more masculine or more feminine? Is it that dark, bold tattoos are more masculine? Because in Sarah's case, her tattoos aren't as dark and they aren't as bold as Snitchery. And yet they both have the same feeling. And Snitchery mentioned that you see a lot more male celebrities with tattoos than you see heavily tattooed female celebrities. 
and a bunch of my formal style icons um, are people like, like David Beckham. He is covered in tattoos and he often looks super formal, super presentable, super respectable. But again, he's a man. You see it more like masculine pop culture figures. So it's almost more accepted for men to have tattoos, to have a lot of tattoos than it is for women. Now, what's interesting about Sarah Overshare's TikTok is she actually got a lot of backlash for talking about this. Some of her comments say, got my first tattoo at 24 and I'm 31 and I still love them. I would never regret my past to fit my aesthetic. I live for me, not others. Someone else said, I have over 10, just turned 21 and have no regrets. Now, if I had something on my neck that looked like that, then I'd be pissed too. Okay, rude. But there are a good amount of people that also really relate to Sarah. Someone said, I'm 29 and got heavily tattooed from 19 to 23. I def regret most of them for aesthetic reasons too. I wish I had gotten black and gray instead of bright colors. Another comment says, this, mine are so aggressive and now I'm like a soft, sweet adult. Doesn't match my aesthetic. And I think the backlash that Sarah got is interesting because it's also a lot of people saying that they're older and they don't regret any tattoos that they've ever gotten, which is great. Obviously that's great for them, but Sarah's just sharing her experience and everyone has a different experience and there's no right or wrong way to go about your life. Like just because you don't regret your tattoos doesn't mean everyone doesn't regret their tattoos or their experiences aren't valid. And I really do think it's valuable to have people's honest, vulnerable, negative experiences with being heavily tattooed. Like these people aren't saying don't get tattooed. They're just saying, hey, this is my experience. Maybe it'll cause some people to think a little bit harder on their decisions, which in my opinion is a good thing. And then I found this video by TikTok user Lol Brendan, who snitched Sarah, snitched who stitched Sarah's video. And he also had a really interesting take on this situation. But look, I always wear long sleeves because I regret a lot of my tattoos. I think they're done well. I paid a good artist, but when I first started getting tattoo, which was the day I was 18, I had no direction of what I wanted. And my advice to anyone is even if you want one tattoo, imagine your body covered in tattoos. Will that one tattoo look good? Uh, if you got a whole body tattoo of the style that you're getting, would that look good? Because I've never regretted a tattoo that I didn't get, but I get a lot of anxiety when I look at myself without a shirt on or when people come up to me and talk to me about tattoos because I have them all over my body now. Um, I always get so much anxiety because I wish they were different. I wish I thought about it more. And this points out something that's common throughout all of these videos that we've been watching. All of these creators are encouraging younger people to think a little bit more about the tattoos that they're getting when they're young. Like Brendan said, if you imagine that small tattoo you're getting, imagine if it was all over your body, how would that look? And while I do think that that is generally good advice, if I think about myself as an 18 year old with no tattoos, I don't know that I would have had the tools or the understanding of tattoo culture to imagine that for myself. I couldn't really envision myself with tattoos. I just knew I wanted a lot of them. And I think that's an experience a lot of people can relate to, but it's also incredibly difficult for an 18 year old in that mindset to then think twice about the tattoos that they're getting. And that's why I think these videos are so valuable because they're coming from people who were 18 and were in that mindset. And they're saying, hey, like I relate to you and I want you to think twice about it. I think that's definitely more powerful than like your mom being like, you're gonna regret your tattoos when you're older. You can kind of just like brush that aside, like mom doesn't get me. Going back to the idea that the decisions you make for your body when you're younger might not reflect who you are when you get older, Quicken has a really interesting point on tattoo puberty. At least when I was younger and I started getting tattooed, I was kind of surrounded by people also going through the same thing as me, a, a tattoo puberty, if you will. When you were in that community, all of your decisions felt right because you were surrounded by people figuring themselves out as well. 
And then we get older, I'm a little bit older than Morgan, and you lose that system that you were in that encouraged you to modify your body. This is something that I personally can't relate to. When I was younger, I was the only person getting tattooed out of my friend groups. Maybe there was like one or two other people getting significant tattoos. But I think a lot of heavily tattooed people can probably relate to being in a group of people when you're younger and everyone wants to be tattooed and everyone wants body mods. And those decisions feel very normal because those are the people you're surrounding yourself with. But now when those people get into their 30s, their lives look a lot different and they feel ostracized. And if you really think about it, like our lives change so significantly in our 20s. So it begs the question, should we be able to get tattooed so young? And there's this interesting article in the New York Times called, What is it about 20-somethings? The article explains that nowadays people are taking a lot longer to settle down than they ever have before. And we should identify the 20s as a stage of emerging adulthood. So you're not fully an adult, but you're not really a kid anymore either. And I'm sure we've all heard that your frontal lobe isn't fully developed until you're 25. So some would argue that it's not smart to make huge life-altering decisions about your body that will be on you for the rest of your life until you're 25. Now I can't say that I completely agree with the idea that we need to wait until we're 25 before we get tattooed. I'm 27, so I would have just started getting tattooed. And I cannot say with full confidence that if I waited to be tattooed until I was 25, I can't say that I would even have gotten tattooed at that point. And that's kind of like a weird realization to come to. But I think for me personally, tattooing and being tattooed has been ingrained into my identity since before I developed my brain. So I now feel like it's very central to who I am. But had I waited, I don't know that I would still feel that way. And honestly, I am glad that I got tattooed before 25. And I'm glad that I have the tattoos that I had when I was younger. But it's clear from today that that experience isn't the same for everyone. And there are also a lot of accounts of people online who are heavily tattooed and they're going through huge tattoo removal. I found this video on Lad Bible on YouTube and it's called I Regret Tattooing My Entire Face. And this video is an interview with Ethan Bramble who goes by Mod Boy. Ethan got a huge amount of his body tattooed and he got a lot of body mods at a very young age. And now he's going through tattoo removal on his entire face. Yeah, so I'm getting a laser, or have been for yeah, pretty much 12 months. And I've probably gone over my full face maybe, like we, we do it in sections, but I've probably gone over the full thing maybe like six or seven times. So Ethan has already had six or seven removal sessions and he clearly has a lot more to go. And Ethan talks a lot about the anxiety that he felt when his face was fully covered. I started getting it done, like the anxiety and stuff I was getting. I, like I want to think that a lot of the anxiety was from just having a face full of tattoos. And I can definitely at least a little bit relate to Ethan's story. Obviously not to his extent where he has significant portions of his face tattooed. And I have a full video on my sleeve story and how I got tattoo removal. And this whole sleeve is a rework. But when I was going through tattoo removal and right before I did tattoo removal, I felt so much anxiety about how my body looked. And it's really hard to describe that, but I was so sad and so, so anxious for so long. And it's really difficult to go through that, especially a decision that you made for your body. And I really can't imagine how much that anxiety would be heightened if it was your face that is creating all of this anxiety. Like this is something you look at in the mirror every single day. With me, I could put a long sleeve on and kind of forget about my arm, but Ethan can't do that with his face. I'm happy with the way I look, but I'm also happy with the mentality that in over the next two years, my face tattoos are gonna become less and less and less. I'm just clearing the canvas. So I really think that it's very courageous for all of these individuals to share their experience. And it's definitely not something that's easy to admit that the people who said that you would regret your tattoos, that they were right. And I have a few tattoo appointments coming up and watching all of these videos definitely made me take a minute to be like, am I 100% sure I'm gonna want this on my body for the rest of my life? And I did decide, yeah, and I, 
am going to get those tattoos still. But I do think it's a really good thing to just pause and think about it, especially if you are 18, 19, early 20s. When I started recording this video, I put up a poll on my Instagram story asking the question, do you regret any of your tattoos? 30% said yes, they do regret their tattoos and 70% said no, they don't. So that's definitely very interesting considering the study that I referenced in the beginning of this video. I feel like it's impossible to get numbers on how many people actually regret their tattoos. So with that, I want to know what you all think in the comments down below. Are you heavily tattooed and do you regret any of your tattoos? Do you have few tattoos and do you regret those? Are you someone that's jumping into getting tattooed and is this making you think differently? Let me know in the comments down below. But if you've made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. If you have, leave me this emoji in the comments so that I know that you are a real one. Bye everyone.